Hey, Fraser students, we are so glad that you tune in tonight to worship with us and to hear a great message from Tyler. We're going to start with King of My Heart. Let the King of My Heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, is my song. Cause you are good. You're good. Hey, Fraser students, and welcome back out to our midweek worship service. It's good to be actually back with you guys teaching. It's been about a month since I've been able to bring the word with having our interns come and preach and then getting to interview Logan last week, which you haven't seen that yet. Go check it out so you can get to know her uh, better. But it's good to be back. And what is super exciting is today marks one month until we are back here in this room. Get hyped because I know I am. It's so good to be here, but it's weird preaching in an empty room. We cannot wait for these chairs to be filled. So remember, September 13th is the first day we'll be back on Sundays. September 16th, we'll be back on Wednesday nights. So go ahead and mark your calendar. But until then, we're going to continue to chug along with what we've been doing. We're going to stay online. And if you're watching on Facebook or Instagram or on our Roku TV app, we just want to say welcome. We're so glad that you are here and that you've decided to be with us for 20-ish weeks so far online. And today we're going to continue on, or not we're going to continue, we're going to start a new series called Squad Up. We're going to be talking about the com importance of community, the importance of relationships with one another, and most importantly, our relationship with God, our Father, the King of Kings. So think for a second as we get going about your favorite squad. 
we're going to be talking about your squad a whole lot. But I think I want you to think more fictional characters. The toys from Toy Story, the Avengers, the kids from Stranger Things. Who's your favorite squad? My favorite squad is probably the Rebels from Star Wars, without a doubt. But a classic OG squad that you are probably completely unaware of is the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. If you've ever heard of them, please comment down below and say your favorite ranger because I, I highly doubt it because this was an early 90s kids TV show. This was the original squad, in my opinion. I remember going down the highway and watching them on a VHS tape in the back of my mom's car. I loved the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. But these guys were a squad. They were the Power Rangers. They were a group. They had the red and the black and the yellow and the blue ranger together. They morphed into these cool suits, but then it got even cooler whenever they had to face the big baddie. They got in their zords, which were these robot animals, and they would come together and form the Megazord. I know it's probably the nerdiest thing you could ever hear, but as a kid, it was incredible. And after they defeated the big baddie at the very end of the 19 minutes of the episode, the last three minutes, they would go back as normal teenagers, go to the Angel Grove Youth Center, and hang out. And they'd be a squad. That was a squad that I always wanted to be in, especially to be with a pink ranger because I had a big crush on her. I'm not going to lie, a lot of 90s kids did. But we all want a squad. We all want a group of people that we can run with, that we can confess anything that we're dealing with to, that we can simply do life with together. And I've talked about this a whole lot, but God created us that way. It's imprinted on our DNA to be together in community, to not do life alone. And for you, your squad may be huge. I remember whenever I first met Elizabeth, I said, hey, I have 11 best friends. And she said, no, you didn't, don't. And then we got married and she saw our wedding party had 11 guys in it. She was surprised by the amount of guys. But you may have a squad of one person. You may have one really close person that you can do life with, and that's awesome. But we need those people. You also may be watching and you feel like you don't have a squad. And that's okay, because we want this place we want Fraser Student Ministry to be a place where you can have a squad, where you can have a group. Because I didn't have those best friends, but one of my closest group of friends was also through my youth group back at home. In North Georgia, I was in a smaller church. We had about 40 students in our youth group, um, but we loved being together. We loved being together at the church. When we were free, we were up at the church playing music. We were annoying our youth pastor, which some of you may do here. Just kidding. Love you. Um, we were playing basketball. We were together all the time at the church. We loved being in the church. And, you know, we believe church is more than just a building. It was the people. But we loved being together at that place. And what was awesome is that these were the people that I did life with. We could talk about Jesus, and then we could pivot and talk about college football. We could worship together in a room, but then we could pivot and go do parkour around the church. The 2000s were a really weird time when I was in youth group. There's videos of it online. Maybe you can find a student parkour around the church. But we need a squad. We need people. And I think that it is found in Scripture why we should have a squad and where the origin of that squad should come from. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and open up to the book of Ephesians. It's in the New Testament. It's one of the Pauline epistles. Paul wrote this to the church of Ephesus. And we're going to look at what Paul said about the origins of a squad, the origins of this family of faith. And I want to look at three key truths about your role in the squad, your role in this family that God has called us to. And the first thing that I want you to know, if you don't get anything else from this night, I want you to know that you are chosen. You are chosen by God himself. Ephesians 5, 3 through 5, I don't want you to miss this. It says, Praise be to God, <clears throat> to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us, check this out, for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in, according with, in accordance with his pleasure and will. I don't know if you've ever caught this idea that God has adopted you. And I know for me, adoption wasn't that big of a deal uh, until I got older and understood the importance of it. Because adoption is one of the most selfless 
and loving acts than anybody could ever do for a person. It's literally going and taking a child that isn't technically or biologically yours and saying, hey, you're my son, you're my daughter, and I'm going to love you until the day that we die. That's adoption. And that's what Jesus has done for us. And we've seen the blessings of adoption so many times firsthand. There are a few families here on staff at Fraser who have adopted kids or who are in the adoption process. My cousin has an adopted two-year-old girl. Elizabeth's best friend and her husband just adopted from India a few months ago. And many of you watching are adopted. You've seen how incredible adoption is. But what Paul is telling us here is that not only are you maybe physically adopted, But you are spiritually adopted by God once you accept Jesus as your Savior. If you know who Jesus is, you're adopted. You're a son. You're a daughter. And that's the highest title you will ever hold. Some of you may grow up to be CEOs. Some of you may grow up to be doctors. Some may be truck drivers, AC men. The biggest thing, the biggest title you'll ever hold is a son or a daughter of God. <clears throat> and because of that, we have that bond with one another. Because of that, we have the greatest squad you could ever imagine. Because we have the greatest Father who chose us. He chose you. You may not feel it sometimes, but God chose you to be a part of this family. And once we make that decision to follow Jesus and join the family, it's the second thing is that you're changed forever. Your life is never going to be the same once you have Jesus. Ephesians 5, 18 through 23, skipping down the page a little bit, <clears throat> Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The same power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. I share that all the time, and I don't think we get excited about that enough. The Spirit of God that raised Jesus from death to life lives with inside you. And once we accept Christ, we have that in us, and we are never the same. That truth empowers us to love our squad more effectively. We're able to welcome others into the family with open arms, that this place that we're standing in right now will not be a place of cliques, but it'll be a place of inclusion. We're welcoming everybody in. That we pray for each other regularly. We do life together regularly. We grow together in our faith. Just as Paul was talking about growing in wisdom, knowledge, and power. And then we become one body where Christ is the head. I don't know if you caught that at the end of this passage, but Jesus is the head, we're the body. I know it's going to be cheesy, but I'm going to come back to the Power Rangers. They had their Zords. They were all individual Zords. But they had to come together as one Megazord to fight the big bad. Guys, in the same way, we're one body. We all have very different roles, but we're all coming together as a squad under the head who is Jesus. And lastly, is that you belong. You're chosen. You're never the same. And you belong. What's radical about God's family back in the day is that there was no exclusions. We we look back at scripture to be a part of God's family. You could have been rich or poor. You could have been a man or a woman, old or young, sick or healthy, influential or an outcast, good person, troublemaker, Gentile, Jew, whatever. You were included in that. But that hasn't changed today. 2,000 years later, Jesus is still just as welcoming to you as he was to Paul back whenever he was blinded on the road to Damascus. You may have doubts or questions about God. Jesus still wants you. You may be the only believer in your immediate family. Jesus still wants you in the squad. You may have had huge mistakes in your past. Jesus still wants you. Don't ever forget that, that you belong. 
You belong in the squad that is the eternal family of God, and you belong here at Fraser in the student ministry. No matter what, what color your skin may be, if you're a guy or a girl, if you're a sixth grader or a twelfth grader, you belong here. And today as we close, we've been talking about the importance of squads and we need each other. But I want to go back to the part of adoption. And if you've never asked Jesus to be your Savior, and you feel like right now may be that moment, we'd ask that you would just simply reach out to us. That one, you would say, Jesus, I need you. I'm a sinner. I've fallen short of your glory, and I cannot do this life alone. I need a Savior. And you'd ask Jesus to fill that void right now. And if you do that, don't just sit there, but reach out to one of us. DM Fraser students, text myself or Logan, or just DM us on Instagram. However, reach out to us in some way and let us know you made that decision so that we can point you to the community. We can point you to what it means to be a a disciple of Jesus. Because once you make that decision, your life is never the same. And you have this community of believers that can't wait to get back together in this room who are gonna hold you accountable and who are going to point you to Jesus. Let's pray. So Jesus, thank you for tonight. Thank you for an opportunity to be able to worship you, to be able to read your word, to be able to study how you are working in our lives. So God, Lord, let us be in this squad that is devoted to you, that is devoted to your gospel, and is devoted to spurring one another on in the faith. Jesus, we love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys.